As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and I am so excited to share this time with you today because today I'm going to begin teaching the 91st Psalm, and it's going to be wonderful. In fact, I want you to have a beautiful copy of the 91st Psalm. So if you'll just reach out to us right now or go online, we will send you a beautifully designed copy of the 91st Psalm. Now, if you have a printer, you can just download it yourself. But if you don't have a printer, reach out to us and we will send it to you. It is just beautifully designed and you can frame it like I have framed mine. I'm going to tell you that the 91st Psalm has really played an important role in the life of the Renner family. We have quoted it and lived by it. We have laid claim to the promises of God in the 91st Psalm. And I'm excited that I can be sharing with you the promises of the 91st Psalm. And the whole series is simply called The Protective Promises of Psalm 91. And the subtitle says, Laying Claim to Every Promise in the 91st Psalm. It's 10 parts and it comes with a study guide. And I just have to tell you the truth. As I prepared to teach this, it fed me so much. I got so excited thinking about all that God promises us in the 91st Psalm if we will lay claim to it and declare it by faith. My friends, you can activate these promises, and that is what this series is all about. Don't miss one of these programs, but you can order these by going online or by giving us a call right now. And we're also offering you a book by our friend Vicki Burke, and this book is tremendous. It's called Help. It's dangerous out there. Do you ever feel that way about the world we're living in today? It's dangerous out there. Well, this book is called Help. It's dangerous out there. And the subtitle says How to Walk in Supernatural Protection. I read this book from cover to cover. I'm telling you, it is so encouraging to see how God will protect us if we'll lay claim to his protective promises. So I want you to have this too. And remember that when you become a partner with our ministry, and by the way, partners, thank you, thank you, thank you for being partners. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 10, 21, the lips of the righteous feed many. And I know that is the call of God on my life is to take teaching that people can trust to the ends of the earth. And you need to understand everybody does not have available to them what you have in your neighborhood or in your city. There are parts of the world where they don't even have a church or a church that teaches good Bible teaching. And they're just crying out. They're saying, God, please send me a voice that can bring me teaching that I can trust. And I believe that is part of my assignment that God has given me. And when you're a partner, you help us take the teaching of the Bible to people that are really crying out for it. And one day when we get to heaven and rewards are given, those that are partners with this ministry are going to be equally rewarded with us for the part they played in getting the teaching of the Bible to the ends of the earth. And if you're already a partner, my friends, I'm so grateful to you. And if you're not a partner, please pray about joining us up as a partner. We need you. We need you. And the moment you become a part of our partner family, we're going to send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone and Denise's little book called The Gift of Forgiveness because we always send these two books to anyone who becomes a part of our partner family. And please remember that you can go to our website right now to order all these things, or you can give us a call. But if you go to the website, you can download the 91st Psalm, or if you don't have a printer at home, just call us and we'll get one in the mail to you because we want you to have the 91st Psalm in front of your eyes all the time. And when you reach out to us, please let us know how to pray for you. We're waiting to pray for you right now. Just call the number on the screen or send us an email. And the moment we hear from you, Denise and I and our team, we're going to release our faith and Jesus is really going to do something tremendous for you. So please reach out to us and we'll put our faith together with yours. But hey, reach for your Bible because we always use the Word of God in this program and we're believing for a revival of the Bible in the church. 
Say amen. But open your Bible to the 91st Psalm. Psalm 90 and Psalm 91 were written by Moses when the children of Israel were wandering around the wilderness. That's interesting. But today, I'm going to be talking to you about dwelling in the shadow of the Almighty. Doesn't that sound good? We're called to dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. You say, what does that mean? Well, today, I believe you're going to find out. But at the time that this psalm was written, the children of Israel were in the wilderness and they were facing all kinds of enemy and opposition. And you have to remember that they had lived in Egypt for nearly 400 years. They had not been in the wilderness for a long, long time. And when they left Egypt and began their walk of faith and went into the wilderness, they were confronting things they had not confronted for 400 years. And among the things that they were confronting were enemies, wild animals, terribly ferocious beasts, snakes, many, many unknown factors, potential fears. And that's when Moses wrote this psalm, which says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of of the Almighty. Well, it's interesting that everybody claims these promises, but these promises don't belong to everybody. They belong to those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High and those who abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But today we're going to see what it means to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And my friends, I know that's where you want to be. So if you don't have your Bible open yet, please open it to Psalm 91. And we're going to begin in verse 1, where Moses writes, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What does he mean when he says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High? Well, the word dwelleth is a Hebrew word which means to dwell or to lodge in one place, to take up permanent residency, to move into a place and to stay there permanently. So this doesn't describe a visitor who comes and goes. This describes a person who's taken up residency in one place. He's become permanent there. He's lodging there. He's dwelling there. He's decided he's never going to move from that place. So this is a promise for people that are permanent dwellers in the secret place of the Most High. And the words secret place in Hebrew describes an inner chamber, an inner chamber. It describes a place of concealment where you are hidden. And in fact, it can also be translated as a hiding place. It is a place of secrecy denoting the most secret compartment. So now we find he that dwells permanently in the most secret place, in the hiding place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. My friends, there's a secret place in the Lord. It is a place of concealment, a place of hiding, and you really can hide there if you will dwell in the presence of God. But this verse is for people who dwell in the presence of God. And for them, God really has a secret place for them to live and to permanently dwell. So in this verse, we read that God is a dwelling place. He is the habitation for those who fear him and who walk with him. And in fact, this verse says the most central chamber of the dwelling place is the secret place. And it describes the complete security of being hidden deep, deep, deep inside of God. And my friends, that is the place which has been given to me and given to you in Jesus Christ. But when you read throughout the Psalms, other Psalms also speak of this secret place. For example, when you read Psalm 32, verse 27, David writes, Thou art my hiding place. There it is again. Thou art my hiding place, and thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. But in Psalm 32, verse 27, he describes God as being his hiding place. Then when you come to Psalm 27, verse 5, David writes, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. There's the hiding place. That's the place which God is inviting you and me to enter into. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In his pavilion is the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me there and he shall set me high upon a rock. What does that mean? Well, we're going to get to that pretty soon. But then when you come to Psalm 30, 
1 verse 20, it says, Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence. And now we find that when you're in the presence of God, it is a place where you are hidden. It is a place of concealment, a place of secrecy, a place where you are protected. And my friends, that is the place which God has extended to every believer to every believer. You say, well, what is the secret place of the Most High? Well, for us, it's being in Christ. My friends, we are in Christ. We are locked up in the person of Jesus. You can't get any deeper in God than to be in Christ. Say amen. In fact, we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, but you are in Christ Jesus. My friends, you are deeply tucked away in the person of God who is in Christ. You can't be any deeper than when you're in Christ Jesus. Then in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it gloriously says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, are you in Christ? I'm in Christ. And in Christ, this verse says we are new creations. Then when you come to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, the apostle Paul was writing to the faithful who are in Christ Jesus. My friends, over and over and over, the Bible says, if we believe in Jesus and we've called him the Lord of our lives, then we've been placed in Christ Jesus. Then you read in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ my friends, we've been placed in the person of Christ. Then you come to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, where the Bible says, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, my friends, we were chosen to be placed inside him. And then you read in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6, He hath made us accepted in the beloved, we've been placed in Christ. We're placed in the beloved. My friends, we're deep, deep, deep in Christ in the secret hiding place. And then in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11, it says, In whom we have received an inheritance. Because we are in him, all the promises of God are activated on our behalf. And then we read in Philippians, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22, in whom you're built together for an habitation through the Spirit. My friends, again, we are in Christ. And then you read in Colossians 2, verse 10, listen to this glorious verse, and you are complete in Him. That verse literally means you are complete. You're complete in Christ, in Him, who is the head of all principality and power. Think about that. You are complete in the one who is the head of all principality and power. And then in 1 John chapter 4, verse 15, John says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. That is true of anyone who confesses that Jesus is the Son of God. And if you've never declared Jesus to be the Lord of your life, declare it right now. Just say, Jesus, I give you my life. I give you everything that I am. Ask you to be the Lord of my life. And this verse says, the moment you do that, God comes into you and you are placed into him. My friends, there's not a more secret secure place than being in Christ. And finally, I love this verse in Colossians chapter 3, verse 3, for you are dead, now listen to this, and your life is hid with Christ in God. You can't get deeper than that. My friends, that is the secret place that we have been placed in. But let's go back to the 91st Psalm again, verse 1, where the verse continues to say, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Again, the word dwell means to permanently lodge, to take up permanent residency. It describes us especially if we're in Christ. We've been placed into the secret place. We are in Jesus Christ. Christ. You know, for years, I struggled with my salvation. I wondered whether or not I was really saved. I was trying to get into Christ when it's so easy to get into Christ. All you have to do is call Jesus the Lord of your life. And the moment you call Jesus the Lord of your life, the Bible says the Holy Spirit baptizes you or places you into the person of Christ and you're placed deep into Him, into the secret place. And for years, it just seemed that it was too easy 
just to believe and be placed into the person of Christ. And many, many years, especially when I was growing up, I struggled thinking, oh, surely I'm not really saved. Can it really be this easy? And I would pray and pray and pray again and say, Lord, just in case I didn't really mean that the last time I prayed it, I'm going to pray it again and really struggled just resting in my salvation. And a day finally came when I said to the Lord, I've had it. This is it. If I've prayed to be saved once, I have asked you to save me 10,000 times. I don't know how to ask any better. I don't know how to ask any more sincerely. I don't know how to declare you to be the Lord of my life more effectively than I've already done and done and done and done. And Jesus, that's it. I'm not asking anymore. I'm either saved or I'm not. And do you know what happened? In that moment, I quit wrestling and I began to rest in my salvation. And from that time until this time, I have never doubted my salvation. My friends, I was placed into the person of Jesus, and there is not a more secret place. There's not a greater place of concealment. It is the greatest hiding place in the world. The devil cannot touch you when you're placed in Christ. And according to Colossians chapter 3, verse 3, your old man is dead and your life is now hid with Christ in God. That is the secret place. And as a believer, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you enter deep, deep, deep into Christ. You're sealed away into him. I say you for are forever tucked up inside the person of Jesus Christ. That is the secret place that belongs to me. And that's the secret place that belongs to you. Oh, this is amazing, my friends. So just breathe and relax. You've been placed in the person of Christ. And not only that, but the 91st Psalm verse 1 goes on to say, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. And the words Most High that is used here is the Hebrew word Elion. It describes the one who is supreme above all. It's exactly what we read in Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. You're complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. But in Psalm 91, verse 1, it says that you are in the secret place of the Most High, the one who is supreme above all, which means you're complete in him who has authority over every foul force, every invisible power, in the whole earth, you are complete in him who is the head of all of it. And the verse says, he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And the words shall abide in Hebrew means to abide, to dwell, to lodge, or to reside. That is where you've been called. You've been called to abide. Abide. You know, when you're abiding, you're resting, you're enjoying where you are. You've been called to dwell. You know, if you're in your house and you're already in your house, you don't say, oh, I want to get in my house. You're already in your house. My friends, you've been placed in Christ. You're called there to abide, relax, enjoy being placed inside Christ. You can lodge there. You're called to reside in this secret place. And this verse says you shall abide permanently. You'll dwell there. You'll lodge there in the shadow of the Almighty. And the word shadow in Hebrew describes a shelter. That means when you're placed into Christ, you are sheltered. It is also the very Hebrew word for a hiding place. And it denotes one who stays in step with the Lord. Now, the truth is many people have been placed in Christ. And technically, theologically, they're in Christ. They're permanently placed in Christ, but practically in their lives, they're really not walking as close to the Lord as they ought. But when you read this verse, all the promises in Psalm 91 are for those who abide under the shadow of the Almighty. All right, let's talk about shadows just for a moment. If you're going to walk with me, and if you want to walk in my shadow, it means you've got to walk right alongside of me because my shadow only goes so far. And if you want to abide in my shadow, it means you've got to be very, very near to me. And not only that, if I move on, you've got to move with me. If I move on and you don't, you're not in my shadow anymore. If I go in a different direction and you go in a different direction, you're not in my shadow anymore. If you're going to stay in my shadow, it means you've got to walk right alongside of me if you want to stay in my shadow. Shadow. Now that brings a lot of clarity to this verse. 
because this verse and everything that we're going to read in Psalm 91 belongs to those who've been placed into Christ and those who are remaining in the shadow of the Almighty, which means everybody cannot lay claim to these verses. If you're not walking with the Lord, you cannot activate these verses. These verses belong to those that are walking in the shadow of the Almighty. And my friends, that is a great reason for you to draw near to the Lord. And by the way, the word Almighty here is the word which describes Shaddai, the great one the one who overpowers everything else. When you walk with the Lord and you're in his shadow, you're walking in the one who has the ability to overcome any evil force that ever tries to assail your life. I like the way that it's stated in Psalm 17, verse 8. Listen to this. Keep me as the apple of thine eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. This is referring to protection and defense that God provides for those who are closely walking alongside of him and are staying in his shadow. Just being a child of God does not automatically mean all of these verses are going to be activated for you. You've got to walk closely with him. You've got to stay in his shadow to experience the promises which we're going to be studying in the 91st Psalm. And again, if you have a printer at home, you can go to our website, download the 91st Psalm, beautifully designed, print it yourself and frame it. Or if you don't have a printer, just reach out to us, call us or go online. Let us know that you want a copy of this and we'll get it to you. But but this verse could thus be translated. They shall abide under the defense and the protection of the Almighty. And again, this word Almighty, the word shadow, the great provider, the one who overpowers everything else. And this means if you walk closely with the Lord, he will be to you a refuge or a hiding place. He will be for you a place of concealment. He will be for you a hiding place. He will be for you a place of protection. He will be for you a place of security. All of those things belongs to the one that is in the secret place and the one that is remaining in the shadow of the Almighty. Now again, Everybody tends to claim all the promises of the 91st Psalm. But verse 1 clarifies very clearly, it is for those that are in Christ, it is for those that are in the secret place, and those that are abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. We're just getting started. Wow. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. Psalm 91 is packed full of protective promises for every believer who abides in the shadow of the Almighty. The Bible promises that when you live under God's mighty shadow, no evil can touch you and no plague or sickness will come near you. In fact, if you live under God's mighty shadow, angels are assigned to watch over you. In this insightful series, Rick will answer questions like, how do you dwell in the shadow of the Almighty? How does God deliver you from the snare of the fowler? How is it possible for no sickness to come near you? This 10-part series, The Protective Promises of Psalm 91, laying claim to every promise in the 91st Psalm, will show you how to lay claim to these protective promises. And it is available in digital or physical format, starting at just $20. In addition, we want to offer you Vicki Burke's powerful book, Help, It's Dangerous Out Here. In this book, you'll learn the secrets to avoiding deadly mistakes, the intentional steps you can take to overcome fear, and the keys to living with immunity from the devil's attacks. You'll also learn how to operate with an unshakable confidence in God's supernatural protection. Today, this book can be yours for $15. Don't miss this bundle offer of the 10-part series, The Protective Promises of Psalm 91, laying claim to every promise in the 91st Psalm. And the book, Help, It's Dangerous Out Here. And be sure to request your free design print of Psalm 91 or visit renner.org to download a copy. Call the number on your screen or visit renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and I'm so excited that today I can come to you from our Tulsa, Oklahoma headquarters building, and I'm standing in the production department where we produce so many resources for people who live all over the ends of the earth that reach out to us for teaching that they can trust. And I know that's the call of God on our life. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many, and our job is to feed many the wonderful Word of God. And right now, 
we're wanting to retire the debt on this building so it frees up funds so we can take the Bible to further places across the world. If you're part of the giving team, thank you. And if not, please pray about becoming a part of our giving team so we can take the transforming truths of God's Word to people all around the world and together we'll retire the debt on this building and it will free up finances so we can reach those that are crying out for answers from God's Word. My friend, I am so glad you've been with me today and I want to remind you that you can go online right now to download your own beautifully designed copy of the 91st Psalm from our website. And if you don't have a printer at home, then reach out to us and we'll slip one in the mail to you and you can frame yours like I have framed mine. And right now we're offering you the brand new series that is just amazing. How to activate all the promises of the 91st Psalm, the protective promises of Psalm 91, laying claim to every promise in the 91st Psalm. My friends, they are there for you if you're in Christ and if you're abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. And by the way, it also comes with this amazing study guide. Please go online to order these things now or give us a call. And we're also offering you the wonderful book by Vicki Burke, which is called Help. It's dangerous out there. And the subtitle says, How to Walk in Supernatural Protection. You will devour this book. I read it in a single setting. You probably will too. It's not a big book, but my goodness, it is so filled with faith and power and encouragement. And friend, I want you to have it. But Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you've placed us in Christ. There's not a more secret place than being in him who is the head of all principality and power. And Lord, for those who actually walk with you, there are powerful promises that are ours. So Lord, help us to draw near and to abide in your shadow. In Jesus' name. Amen. Denise and I are going to be coming to the United States and we're going to be ministering in some churches. And if you can join us, please try to come to one of the following meetings. On Sunday, January 28th, we'll be with pastors Mark and Rhonda Garver at the Cornerstone Word of Life Church in Madison, Alabama. On Saturday and Sunday, February 3rd and 4th, we're going to be with pastors Jim and Ann Freeze at the Joy Church in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. On Sunday, February 18th, we'll be with Pastor Frederick Price Jr. and Lady Angel Price at the Crenshaw Christian Center Faith Dome in Los Angeles, California. And on Tuesday and Wednesday, February 27th and 28th, we'll be with Pastor Jerry Moore at the Word of Life Church in Miami, Florida. I cannot begin to tell you how happy Denise and I would be to see you in one of those meetings, but please go online for more detailed information. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. This program was made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.